show you the techniques I use for skinning a bobcat for a life size mount. The first step I do is to open the mouth up. Be very careful. Separating the lips and the nose from the jawbone. And the reason I do this is later on when we're skinning down over the head, it makes it a lot easier to get this off nice and clean. Pry the mouth open a little if you need to, it'll help. Turn it over to the other side. I use a number 23 scalpel blade. Most supply companies sell them. They sell the handles. For all close-up work, I use a scalpel. If you don't know how to sharpen a knife real well, they make a number 60 blade that'll help you skin. It'll, it's a bigger blade. So there we got the jaw separated. Now we're gonna make the cuts. In the cat, as I said, we're going to do a life size here. I use a ventral incision. I'm going to start right at the paw. Center of the paw, go through the center of the pad. Make a nice clean cut. All the way down the back side of the leg. Staying to the inside slightly so the Steam hides over to the center of the body. Now we make the same cut on the opposite leg. Try to find where he's finished with the last one. Make the cut right to that same spot. Now we're going to open up the back legs to the center of the pad again, following the back side of the leg. Right up through the anus. We're going to do the opposite leg. Legs are all open. Now we're going to find our seam. Where we cut to the front two legs, we find the center of the body and make that cut right down the center of the body. We're going to go all the way back through the cuts we made on the back leg at this point. Okay, now this is a male cat. I'm going to go around the testicles. So when I mount it, I can put testicles right back into the mount. Now I'm going to skin the four legs down to start the skinning process. I'll find my seam. I usually start right at the knee joint. Very careful not to cut through the hide any more than you have to because it just causes sewing later. This cat happened to be snared so it should not have any 
holes in it prior to this step. pressure because the cats will pull. Now I'm going to go back to the scalpel because it puts a little area where you want to be a little careful. A little tight working area. As you notice I'm always keeping pressure on the skin so I know where to cut. cat will skin by hand down the leg. So we got all four legs loose, all the toe bones cut loose. Like I said, we'll take care of that later. We start to job the skin very carefully. We'll work our way down, get the tail cut off. We'll remove the tail bone at a later time. This cat was froze. I thought it out overnight. I would rather skin a fresh animal. They skin easier. But the nice thing about a frozen one is you don't get blood all over the place. time by the back leg it makes skin a lot easier. Now we're at the tailbone. I'm just going to sever the tailbone from the body. Now I use borax just lightly Keep my hands dry with it. Skin. We're going to do the detail work up around the head next. Being very careful, work our way towards the ear butts and the lips. So very carefully, work your way around the neck and the head, side to side. And if you 
you paid attention to the anatomy, you'll know approximately where the ears are on the head. That's the one thing you need to really learn when you're skinning is the anatomy of the animal. So you know where to make the cuts that you need to make properly. And that comes with studying the animal, studying reference, which is vital to all mounts. Now we're getting down here into the jawbone where the ears are going to be connected. Take it to the other side. Right here is going to be the ear. I'm going to stay real deep into the skull. And sever that ear right away from the skull. There's the ear, ear canal. I just severed it. Pull tight. Now I'm going to locate the other side. Right here's going to be the ear canal, right down at the base of the jaw. Now I'm going to very carefully skin from there forward, and if you studied, you'll figure you'll know about where the eyes lay. Flipping it over again, bring the other side to the same place. Now here's where I made my job easier by cutting the bottom jaw loose earlier. At this point, I can bring that bottom jaw all the way off, skin that up, and that will help me locate the eye at the same time. Keeping this tight, the eyeball is right. Right here, if you had needs, you can feel from the inside. Keep it good and solid and cut real deep. Once you find the inner eyelid, keep pressure on that. Cut the rest of the eyelid away from the skull. Turn it over. You'll repeat the process on the other side. I'm going to cut deep into the eyelid again, making sure when I cut the eye loose, I save the outer eyelid completely. Now I already took the lips loose earlier, Just down over the nose. There's what the product looks like at this point. Now that we've got the skin off the cap, we're going to work on the ear and lip area. We're going to very carefully I can't do it any other way. Need a new blade. This this takes practice and patience. And in your learning process, find animals that aren't as important to practice the ears and the lips. Because it all takes time to learn. You're going to make some mistakes that you're going to have to fix. And through the mounting process, we'll learn how to fix them. If you're a hunter and you just wanted to get this in the freezer or something, at this point you could have rolled it up and froze it. I use a steel bar that I've had made, push inside the ear. So I can work the ear down. Basically what you're doing is you're separating two sets of membranes here. Separating the skin from the cartilage of the ear, the inner cartilage. Done. This ear should be turned completely inside out. Keep light pressure with the bar right at the point of the tack.
I use my fingernails a lot. And there we have an ear turned inside out. At this point, I trim the extra meat off the base of the ear, around the earbud, so through the panning process that doesn't spoil and cause problems. And there's what your ear would look like, turned inside out. Now we will do the other, the nose and the lips. The nose, I go right down the center of the nose pad. I got my finger on the nose pad, keeping pressure pushed up at all times. And I also use that finger to feel where the blade's cutting. And I'll trim that nose. Very carefully opening it up all the way around. And there's the nose that's opened up. Now the lips, you're going to just like butterfly the lips. You're going to separate. They're really thick along the edges. We're just going to separate the meat from the skin. I always start at the corner of the mouth and very carefully I've got my finger underneath again. Pushing up, keeping pressure, pulling with my thumb. And I'm just rolling that flesh in inner mouth back over the lips. Flip around and we'll do the other side forward. Same technique, finger underneath, pull with the thumb. We're doing the top, complete top lip first. You can see the inside of the whiskers right here. Be careful not to trim them too close or it'll cause them to fall out. So I've actually separated the inner mouth away from the hair follicles. Now we're going to do the bottom lip. Top lip was easy, bottom lip's a lot thinner. This takes a lot of practice to know where you're feeling with this knife. Right now I'm going to trim the eyes a little through the heavy spots, open them up so that the salt penetrates. I use a commercial tan, so I do not flesh really close. If you're going to use a home tan, you're going to flesh it closer. But you'll learn that part in the tanning process. At this point, this is what the lips will look like. We've got them turned inside out, so we've actually got two, two layers there. We separated them right down the center. Okay, at this point, we're going to remove the toe bones. If we separated them right when we took them off, otherwise we take a knife and we separate them so we have on a cat four separate toes on the back and the front. On the front, you will also have a dew claw, which is up higher on the skin. The dew claw. Here's the toe bones, the dew claw is way up here. We take the toe bones at this point. I use my vise and my shot. Clamp the toe bone in. Very carefully start cutting around, keeping pressure. See if I can do this without removing a claw. 
And we've got the first toe bone out. Bone's gone. All that's left there is the claw and the bone attached directly to the claw. We will move all four toe bones. There again, very carefully cutting. Toe bone's gone. It takes considerable pressure. Um, I would suggest raccoons, fox, coyotes, practice on the animals that you got better access to. Cats are a little tougher to remove than say a coyote or a fox, but once you get used to it, none of them are too bad. Now that we have all the toes removed, I'm going to show you a quick easy way to remove a tailbone if you don't want to cut it out. Otherwise you can make the incision on the bottom of the tail and cut it completely out. I've got the tailbone clamped in the vise. I've got just the normal pliers. I'm going to open it up so it's got a gap. I'm going to work it around that tailbone. And I'm just going to put pressure on it, keeping a tight tailbone, pull the tailbone out. At this point, you can take your knife. And that tail, tail needs to be opened up so you can get salt and tanning to it. Now you may watch other videos, other people may give you different, better ideas. Just because I do it does not make it right. There are a lot of ideas out there and we should all be learning every day. But you open that tail all the way up to the edge. You got a nice open tail. At this time we've got both ears done, the lips done. All the toes done, the tail out. We're going to remove any excess flesh that happens to be left on this animal so that the salt can cure the hide. The more flesh that you leave on it, the more fat you leave on it, the more chance of a slip spot on the hide when it's tanned. You want to get it cleaned down now. There will be videos with using a draw knife and a fleshing beam. We will have videos on the website to teach that. That's the easiest way to do it. At this point today, I'm not gonna set up my fleshing beam and draw knife for one cat. So I'm gonna do it just with my scalpel and get off the excess stuff, prop stuff I need. At this point, this cat is completely skinned out. Now I do a, not a really complicated tattoo system, but I have a log book that I keep track of all my customers mounts in. At this point, I'm going to mark this cat. This is the second cat of the year that I've taken in. So this cat will actually be what I would call a one-two mark, which means I'm going to make one mark above the tail, then I'm going to move down and I'm going to make a second mark an inch below that, and then I'm going to go an inch to the right and make the two. So I got a one and a two. And that's what will be wrote down for this customer at that point. Down two steps left in this cat. We're going to thoroughly salt this cat 
so that it can cure. Make sure all the edges are rolled out nice and clean as the edges of a all fur will stick. And if you don't roll them out really good, work the salt into them, all the toe areas, you will end up with slip spots. Salting is one thing. Slip spots are the hardest thing to fix. You can get old if you make them skinny. If you have a slip spot, the only way to fix it is to remove part of the hide. You do not want to remove part of the hide because you have excess flesh on it when you salt it or because you didn't get salt worked into it. So very carefully salt this hide. I will even put a little salt inside the ears, inside the face area, in the lip. It is very important to keep that hide rolled all the way out to the edge. good. Now this is the tough part because now you're going to have to roll this hide forward over the edge so you want to make sure there was no spots underneath untouched with salt. Make sure the lips are opened up. You got salt rubbed in all the lip areas. Now you want to make sure you use a non-iodized salt for this process. I use a really really fine rock salt. It's a stock salt at a local feed store. I've been told you can buy 25 pounds of non-iodized salt at Sam's Clubs. I've never bought it that way. Just find a non-iodized salt. It's not a, if it's a rock salt, it has to be very fine. So you can work it in. At that point, I'm going to let that cat cure in that salt for one to two days, depending on the curing process. At this point, we are going to be taking a series of measurements. I have a set of calipers on hand. We're going to take the width of the skull at the widest point. Close the calipers down at the widest point without pushing into the meat. Lay the calipers out next to a ruler. I have Three and five eighths inches wide at this cat at the widest point on the skull. We're going to take a nose, nose to eye measurement. This could have been done before you skinned it so you knew exactly where the nose was, tip of the nose. I'm going to go by what I know from past experience where it was. I'm going to measure from that point to the corner of the eye. This cat has one and five eighths inches. I'm going to log that in. You will find log sheets for life-size animals and game heads on a different spot on this website for recording these measurements with the hunter's name. We're going to take two more. We're going to take three more measurements. We're going to take from the tip of the nose, where the tip of the nose would have been, to the back of the skull. This one we measure six and seven eighths. The fourth measurement we take is going to be a circum is going to be a total length measurement from the tip of the nose, follow the back line to the base of the tail. We have 35 and a half inches. We're going to take a chest measurement right behind the front legs we have 17 and three quarters we're going to take a belly measurement the biggest spot around the midsection
We have 22 and 3 quarters. At this point, you can dispose of the carcass, you can remove the head. If they want a skull mount, this cat happens to have to go back to the game fishing parks in South Dakota because by law they all have to be turned into the state. That is the training video on skinning a bobcat.